for, I believe actually the, the south one's slightly mounted uh, in the back, but for the most part, it is a flat surface on top of that and meets grade in terms of being a mobile surface. Like it, the, the, on top of those spaces are to the naked eye, if you didn't know, like you guys know there's a stormwater detention system there, it would just be an open lawn space. Okay. Much like typically you don't know exactly where your leaching field is in when you have a septic system, it's yep. below grade. Same concept. All, all leaching system is, is an infiltrator designed for septic versus designed for stormwater. Okay. All right. Because I just, as I look at, as I look at this plan, it's just hard for me to imagine that only 48% is by build, is covered by building of pavement. We seem to have a lot of it. Anyway. All right. Okay. Um, 48%. Okay, we were on to uh, 2B. Um, your regulations, section um, 9B, require two parking spaces per dwelling unit each. Um, this was a concern, uh, even though we are providing those two parking spaces, um, because one was a garage. As such, we did go out, revise our plans, uh, and we submitted back, and believe it was the August revision, uh, showing parking along the inside loop, providing an additional 13 spaces. So essentially our, if you go to a uh, sheet two, I believe, or possibly one, two, not the stormwater, one or two, one or two, one, thank you. One, yeah, okay. The, you'll see that we, on this plan per the request, we added the cars. These are showing conforming spacing uh, for the town regulation, which I believe is 23 by nine for a parallel parking space. And we were able to get 13 additional cars along that inside loop. So as we had stated verbally, and then based on the requests shown on the plans, we are able to get essentially 2.65 parking spaces per dwelling unit, which exceeds the regulated requirements. And that's and that oh, still ahead. works with fire trucks and buses? We'll get there, it does. <laughs> Okay. Um, so on, boom. The next one right there is tur turning radiuses. I believe it's sheet fourteen uh, has a turning radius. Shows a thirty foot pump truck entering the site, being able to navigate around. Right there. Uh, so what is shown there entering the site and circulating around the uh, the loop with the one-way tr traffic on the driveway is a 30-foot pump truck. Um, this comes in maintaining DOT standards of the uh, not crossing the center of the drive aisle. Now, where this caveat becomes interesting, the 24-foot driveway we have, sorry, side conversation, the 24-foot driveway we have we maintain what is typically the standard DOT of make sure we don't cross the center line, meaning it's a 12 foot drive aisle. Your regulations require, and what we're actually providing is a 15 foot drive aisle. So this truck is able to navigate with three feet of float space between the cars and where its center line is. May okay. I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure it's on one of these maps. How wide is this road? 24 feet. 24 feet. Correct. Thank you. Which again is why we utilize the 12 foot um, drive aisle when, when having the truck circulate in terms of checking for crossing center line. Yes, Diane. Um, so the turning radius is based on a 30 foot truck. Um, is, do you know, um, or how is it that you arrived at a 30 foot truck for your representation? So uh, essentially there's a variety of truck sizes, obviously different makes models, just like sedans have various sizes. Uh, in terms of fire trucks for pump trucks, we typically see anything from the 21 range up to about 30 for a pump truck and ladder trucks start at 30 and go up to, actually the, Wallingford recently has one that's close to 50 and doesn't make any turns anywhere. But um, as such, there's there's an element of taking what you have uh, is a good, uh, you have to take a, a assumption and roll with that. And so the 30 foot truck would accommodate ambulances, 
um, obviously the 30 foot fire truck uh, and a shorter ladder truck. Now, I know the additional question is, well, what about longer trucks? And I know the question was asked specifically about buses. Uh, we did run with buses. Um, however, I wanna just put this out there. I spoke with the Board of Eds, uh, it's in my memo, his exact title, uh, but the the guy in charge of the Board of Ed with school buses, and he made it abundantly clear that school buses are under no obligation to enter private property, driveways or other situations like this. Y yes, this is, it's a private drive. They will get picked up on the Berlin Turnpike, much like residents on the oh. Berlin Turnpike are currently picked up. Matter of fact, there's actually a stop on the north side uh, about 200 feet down for a single residence that the bus stops and picks one individual up there. Uh, to accommodate what he mentioned specifically, uh, you'll see on the east side, just south of the entrance, there's a square added on uh, sheet one. It's designated as a uh, school bus pickup, but we've added a congregation location so that students would congregate on the property, not within the state right away. And once the bus arrived, would walk the short distance to the bus to get on it. Uh, it's on sheet one. It's also it's on this sheet. It's just not labeled on this sheet. It's on sheet one. Uh, if you zoom in near the driveway or go up to sheet one. That's sheet one. All right. And what are we looking at here? And did you want this? Wall? Yep. Down towards the driveway. Uh, layer must have missed. I'm sorry, but th that square that's right, that we're looking right, right there, that, that square. I'm extremely curious what she labeled it on. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, but that square right there is what we were designating as the congregation location for uh, students. So that. But the bus still won't enter the property, so they have to be. Correct. They're not. So essentially. Going to get picked up there. So it, it, if I may. Yes. When the, bu the bus routes are designed and pick children up, especially on the, along the Berlin Turnpike, based on my conversation with the director, they are supposed to wait on their own property. So up the driveway, because they're not supposed to be waiting in the right of way anyway. The bus will stop, turn their lights on. And in this case, I believe it's uh, close to a 30 foot walk from that location to the bus for pickup. Across the grass lawn. Because there's no sidewalk, right? Correct. There, there is no sidewalk. There's also no sidewalk within the Berlin Turnpikes right away. It's not a walkable road. No, I'm thinking within your private little complex. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, buses. Uh, last thing on buses, as I know it was mentioned, uh, what about uh, special needs individuals? The Berlin School District does have a fleet of smaller buses and vans designed specifically during enrollment to pick up individuals with those needs. If there was to be a student like that, the district is required by law to make that accommodation and they have the, the means to make that accommodation to, at that point, enter the property for the special needs individual. All right. Um... For the record, I'm pulling up sheet five where that stop is. Thank you. Area. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Landscape plan. So they got to cross through the boat bushes to get to the turnpike. They would indeed be walking underneath two trees. Yeah. Much like trees along sidewalks, people walk beneath the canopy. Yeah. All right. Uh, going on um, to 2E. Uh, uh, there's a comment about side yards, outdoor usable space for occupants. I believe we've addressed the outdoor usable space in part by uh, on the landscape plan. Specifically, you'll see the addition of uh, some benches and uh, picking tables, especially if you zoom out here, uh, identified some locations for resident enjoyment, waiting locations, uh, and specifically on top of the stormwater detention, you'll see we included some picking tables to just highlight the uh, usefulness of that space. 
Uh, Maureen, if you could zoom out slightly. The sheet you are currently on, just need you to zoom out. Where am I seeing picnic tables and community gathering? Yep. All right. Along the turnpike? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I'm just trying to get a direction. So for, for a point in, of example, dead center uh, on the island, you'll see that uh, black rectangle flanked by two smaller rectangles. That's a uh, dimensionally a picnic table. Uh, we've got two of them located up to the north uh, near near the uh, wetland on top of that stormwater detention system. Two of them. No, no, we're talking the 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 black ones, the dark black ones. Where are they? Wow. Oh, yeah. you put yeah. picnic tables. Jeez. So we've got two picnic tables there up top. Two picnic tables as well. Picnic table in that central courtyard in the loop. So this is their community space. Much like any lawn would be, yes. You know, wouldn't their community space be nice right in the middle where those houses are? That's that would interesting be a really, to consider. That would be a really nice community space. You know, just get rid of those four houses. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That would be the perfect community space because everybody would have access to it and you wouldn't be putting baby in the corner. <laughs> have you thought about that? I'm not prepared to address that matter. Okay. Perhaps a, a different, well, one of the design professionals maybe, but right. running through the engineering elements of this. Okay. You just right. mentioned that. I thought I would bring up what we had done on the site plan. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. We'll come, we'll circle back. All right. Uh, moving on to F, the adequacy of refuse. Uh, this was stated in the previous meetings uh, at least twice, I believe, that trash pickup is to consist of uh, how much of Berlin residents deal with trash with the two, two individual unit barrels to be taken to the curb for pickup uh, on designated times by trash uh, collection professionals. All right, so you're not going to, okay, I'm sorry. Will you be using the town, the, like the dainty rubbish or what the town uses, what other residents in Berlin use, or is it going to be a private um, outfit that comes and picks up the trash? Because if it's a private Pri road. Private contract. Right, okay, so private contract. But the process is similar to the rest of Berlin in terms yeah. of the two bin system. All right, moving on to... Uh, G, uh, there was a comment about inadequate snow storage. Uh, in our office's professional opinion, the snow storage provided is adequate, uh, especially with these smaller units. You're going to see a lot more utilization of a contractor with a snow blower than plows, which allows for additional snow from driveways to be flung in uh, optimum locations. Um, okay, so the optimum locations, are, are they going to be in the green spaces in the corners there over the... Just to clarify, we're worried about the green spaces during winter, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. uh, yes. So there are, as you can see, the shaded area. No, I'm, I'm wondering yeah, if I, that's where you're putting your snow. So if you've you, got picnic tables there. If you look around the loop, you'll see the shaded area along the edge that is designated for where primarily we're going to be putting our snow storage. Looking at the plan, you'll see that nice, nice light blue shading along the roadway. Blue no. Green. All right. So I'm not looking at the right correct. page. I apologize. I don't know. Yeah, 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 the shaded area along the roadway, correct. I'm not sure. What plan are you on? Sheet five. Oh, here we go. Five of 16. All right, you got to go over to five to 16, five of 16. All right, so in the shaded area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Along every roadway, we have shaded area provided for snow storage. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We haven't gotten that far. Mm. Okay. But that wipes out all your landscaping. Negative. That would not. Uh, what, we're Negative. what we are proposing is uh, rhododendron, primarily for our bush plantings. They're specifically hardy for New England. They survive significant snow, uh, significant snowfall on a regular basis, as well as they are very tolerant in terms of having snow placed on top of them. The trees along they, the edge... They, what I'm sorry, are they okay with like road salt and sands? As far as I, in my personal experience with, with the ones along my my property growing up, they never had an issue with it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I don't have a green thumb. So, I mean, mine would just, I would look at them and they would croak, so. 
rhododendron is <laughs> mm -hmm. Connecticut's mountain laurel rhododendron is is pretty gosh darn hard to kill in general. I, it, okay. it it grows like weed. Um, and additionally, the trees that I know are have been mentioned as a concern. There is a risk for the first couple of years um, if there was to be a hardy storm. But that is why on our green plan we do have it's a requirement of the uh, the applicant, the developer, and then later the uh, maintenance company to ensure the life of those trees and replace them if need be. Once established, mature trees don't really care about having snow pushed against them, especially once you have a uh, seasonal melt, you're just going to get water that is going to dilute the salt to a point that it's not a concern, much like how lawns along roads are not permanently browned. Any concern about the other trees? The rhododendron you said are pretty gosh darn hard to kill, but the other trees you have similar? There, so there, there is... And full, full transparency, there's a inherent risk for any young tree being planted. And that's why we have the survivability replace plan. Uh, the trees we have picked are consistent with Connecticut recommended um, uh, by various arborist groups for being roadside trees and, and sidewalk trees. So they are typically more hardy in handling salt and snow piling upon them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, G is where I left off. Okay. On to two, three. Um, uh, threats to the perimeter vegetation. Um, uh, essentially, we have consulted the arborist. And again, our plan does state that we're looking for the survivability of the trees. I know there's a concern that if trees were to die along the perimeter, they will be replaced with a smaller tree, but that's essentially uh, it, it, the cost of doing business in terms of if a plant dies, you don't get a 40 foot oak and plant it. You plant a smaller tree and it grows into a 40 foot oak in time. Um, moving on to, sorry, I've lost my place. I apologize. Uh, two, four, um, uh, planning may wish to evaluate the perimeter setbacks, including fence. Uh, I, my office doesn't have a comment on this at this time outside of what's already been stated. Uh, we go on to 2.5, uh, and this is specifically about uh, relocating plantings, increasing curb heights um, to discourage parking on lawn areas or access. Any formal guidance prevents, provided by any staff or the commission is always welcome. Uh, if you guys want higher curbs uh, than the standard six inch curbs, that provide that feedback and we're more than willing to acquiesce to that. All right, moving on. Uh, on to three, yes. Too far. Yep. Did, did I miss um, you addressing 2D, uh, the building separation? I, I believe I said uh, my office doesn't have a comment at this time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on to three, uh, no comment on the architectural plans from my office. Moving on to four, uh, traffic and transportation. Some of this we already touched on um, a little bit, um, but uh, DOT encroachment permit uh, correspondence from DOT regarding the proposed encroachment permit curb cut driveway removal um, from the turnpike is anticipated. We have received that. Uh, I submitted uh, copies of the Berlin Turnpike uh, sorry, the DOT's correspondence, as well as our letter addressing their comments. Um, their, those changes are implemented in the plans before you. Um, we'll touch base on that in a second if you guys want to go a little bit more in depth. With that, uh, there's a request uh, for us to include the uh, t planning and zoning town engineer traffic authority in all correspondence. We have been including the town um, town planner and all correspondence with the DOT. And whenever we receive any feedback, we've been providing 14 copies uh, to, to the town for uh, distribution to all departments and commissioners. Uh, so we will continue to do that. All right, rolling on real quick to zone, zoning regulations section five. Um, say again. Okay. Uh, do, I, I just I wanted to mention specifically because the parking ratio did come up here again. Um, the parking ratio information is on sheet one, and that was discussed with the uh, required two per unit and uh, the additional parking spaces along the edge that we have included. Um, all right. At that point, I will turn this back over unless you guys want to go through the DOT's seven comments. Anyone 
anyone have any questions? Is this a good time? Would you like to show us which ones you've identified for what? Um... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, sheet one. Uh, Maureen, if you could just zoom in, because I, I will admit it's been a bit since I've checked the colors uh, just above the legend on the right hand side. Okay, green is 60, blue is the uh, the 80. Um, so based on that, the, based on the uh, comments about the equitability of, of the uh, distribution of the units, um, we had color-coded them previously. Again, green is that 60% uh, threshold and blue is that 80. Uh, previously, we did have uh, all of the units stacked against the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, there was a comment about sticking the other units in the corners. Um, as such, we have pulled one of the 60% units off, putting it in the middle of that row along to the north. Uh, we took one of the uh, corner units at the 80%, put it along the backside dead center on that row. Um, we are we then took one of the other 60% uh, units that was closer to the turnpike, and we put it in that central island. And then lastly, uh, this is going to be a difference of opinion. I know the, uh, the commission had said sticking them in the corner. I personally think the corner units are preferable uh, in terms of feeling a little bit more off the road. So we are remaining one of those corner units to be that 80% threshold for the affordability. And again, any formal guidance from the commission where they would like these units, we are more than open to. Um, but positive feedback versus more equitable would be greatly appreciated in terms of distributing them. Again, for the record, Megan Hope, there were two um, two comments in the architectural plan, section three of the staff memo. Uh, the first had to do with code compliant. Maureen, we didn't receive anything from the building department or fire marshal. Did anything come in on this application? I don't know if you sent it to Chris. I didn't get anything from him. So anyways, that... Not similar to the comments on 1906, okay. if that's what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I didn't know if I something had... Preliminary comments had come through. Right, the... okay. So there's been nothing new. We believe we've addressed everything, um, all the comments we've gotten from the fire marshal. And again, um, at the time we go to submit for a building permit, we would file um, detailed plans uh, that are in compliance with the building code and fire code. Regarding um, item two, the accessible unit, um, we did make that reconfiguration um, and I can make the statement for the record that the exterior appearance is unchanged of that accessible unit. Okay. Zach did mention that he submitted two detail letters regarding the his correspondence with the DOT. Is that something you would like Zach to go through or do you feel like the written testimony in the letter is sufficient? Okay. Yeah. So it's two letters, and it's on uh, the Giuliano letterhead. Okay. In the DOT too, as well. And make sure you have those. It's attached like this to the plan set. It was attached on top of it in a in a thing. This one says October night nine from Giuliano. And in the same clip, they provided a DOT letter um, September 28th, which we also got in the office um, via mail. So I'm not sure if the copies you have have the stamped receive date on them as well. But that's what I put in here. And Giuliano's Associates, October 6th letter to DOT. Those were all clipped together and in the elastic band that
Um, referencing the letter from the state of Connecticut Department of Transportation on the second page or back number nine, it says a 15 foot setback from the edge of road must be used. Um, I assume that's from Berlin Turnpike. Uh, for the record, Zach Georgina, that 15 foot setback is for determining sight line distance. It's from the gutter line of the Berlin Turnpike to the uh, exiting travel lane. Uh, if you go further on uh, to one of the, I believe, the last sheets we implemented the sight line, uh, you'll see the actual dimensions of that. I believe it's sheet 14. Uh, keep going. Is it 14? That, that, sorry, that you. Oh, you're right. That that one, correct. Yes. Um, this addresses the sight line distance. Um, if you zoom in, uh, you're able to see the, the dimensions on where the sight line distance is taken from. Uh, the start bar per DOT's request was moved up to be 12 foot from the gutter line. Uh, and then it's assumed that where your vehicle is sitting is three feet additional behind that for that 15 foot setback. And then you take your sight line distance based on speed, uh, looking for where your traffic conflicts are. Uh, and looking out, we have line of sight. Um, I believe it's uh, 700 feet. Uh, there's a dimension on there as well. Not seeing the dimension. Hold on a second. So looking here, uh, you can see this symbol right here is where that uh, um, point is. So that is the, that 15 feet back, stop bar being that 12 foot back. Um, and that's where, where you're assuming your uh, vehicle is physically sitting when looking for your sight line distance co conflict. The numbers on the bottom side. Uh, correct, cor the numbers are. You no, know, the 700. Thank you, seven, uh, that other 700. So if you, if you. Yeah, if you scroll okay. down a little bit. Yeah, that's going to be. And then go over to the right. You're going to see the the arrow is right at the bottom. Going to go down a little bit more, Zach. There it is. So the next um, section in the, the the staff memo had to do with the zoning regulation. I'm going to skip over that because my understanding from Attorney Smith has told me is that you're considering that under a separate application. There's a text amendment, and this is a site plan. So I'm going to skip over that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's um, pertinent to any decision you'd make in the context of this public hearing. The next section has to do with the affordability plan. Um, I'm hoping that Brian is still there and awake so that he can um, run through those. I believe we already have addressed item one, which has to do with this, the dispersion of the units. And as Zach mentioned, if there's some tweaks that the commission wants to that, we're open to that. We just took the feedback and, and colored the units. Um, so I'll turn it over to uh, Brian. Not immediately seeing him. Oh. Mm -hmm. So, All right. So the affordability uh, term. Um, Correct. That's okay. The restriction for the 40 years. Sure. So, um, and I believe Attorney Smith has already stated this, but um, the um, applicant uh, is only going to have that restriction for 40 years. Okay. So he's not willing to concede to go further. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And uh, as I think uh, Attorney Smith has stated previously, um, the applicant is uh, proposed to be the administrator um, and uh, would not consent uh, to the town or some other entity um, being the 
uh, being the administrator. Okay, so he will not even consider that. Correct. Okay. I just want to make sure we're clear. Yep. Okay. And I think Brian had mentioned uh, previously that um, he would be able to update the um, income thresholds. Um, that's item number five. And we had, regarding item number six, we did um, specifically locate which units would be the affordable units on the plan. So I believe we have addressed um, that comment as well. Okay. So that runs through the memo. All right. Happy to answer other questions. Yeah, thank you. And hopefully you can. Commissioners, do we have any questions at this point? Yeah. So attorney Hope, uh, with regard to number seven, so, um, there's no objection obviously to any of that. Number seven. Oh, seven of section six, you're saying? Yes. Well, my client has indicated that number seven is fine. And any comments on number six? There a preference among those three things. Um, sure. So for the record, my client has indicated that um, our understanding is it was written as an A or B. Yes. Um, and his preference would be B, except that he doesn't um, consent to approval by the town planner. Correct, Mr. Stone. So the administrator. Currently, it's drafted administrator and the town. Okay. He says he said the town planner language is okay. So six B as it's written. Is preference. Okay. Preference. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Commissioners, do we have any questions? Mr. Trolder has his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, Glenn Trolder from Planometrics. Um, I'm actually kind of pleased to see that the summary report that we put together provided a good framework for this discussion. I think it'll also help the Commission during the deliberations process. Um, just a couple of things I did want to note or clarify or um, highlight, if you will, for the commission's discussion. Um, Mr. Snow and I were joking over here. That there's sort of a funky layout of the accessible unit, but it's really not a material matter for the commission in terms of uh, a loft space and and high ceilings, et cetera, in the unit. But I'm, I'm sure we can uh, figure that out. I, again, I don't think it's material to this approval. Um, I think the issues I did want to point out, um, I think there's a huge improvement in the location of the units compared to what we saw the first time. I'm not quite sure that we're there yet. Um, so the commission, we may have some conversations during the deliberations process about um, some additional modifications of those units. Um, again, I'd like to highlight uh, with regard to the administrator, um, I, I think the commission might have no issue with Mr. Snow with his business's experience dealing with rental units and all of the other things and be qualified, if you will, to do this. But I think that should Mr. Snow sell a property at some time in the future, 
the commission should be aware at that time we have a qualified administrator. So I think what we attempted to put out here for the commission's consideration is that we just need the qualification stuff and the approval of the administrator will not be unreasonably withheld, but it, it can't be the builder's receptionist. That's, that's just not gonna work. I heard of another scenario, which actually for a condo was the condo board, which really had no interest in managing affordable units, but that's the way they were designated. So to make, make sure we get qualified people, I think it should be just a simple, you know, been in business for a number of years, experience with tenants, income statements, all of the other stuff, um, and and uh, do that. So um, I think the language that was uh, submitted to the commission is they would not consent to that. And this may be a situation where the commission may, I may advocate to you that that's something that maybe is a condition of approval, whether they consent or not. But I think it's that important. Talk to the Department of Housing on this matter. The language qualified, capable, and experienced came from the Department of Housing. And I think that that's an important criteria for an administrator. Um, I also understand on the affordability plan item 6B, um, uh, the applicant indicated that was their preference. That's really what the affordability plan came in with. And again, it's the situation if somebody becomes ineligible, and then the next available unit would move around. So the units aren't actually fixed in 6B. So uh, just to make consistent, either we specify the units or we don't, um, the applicant has indicated a preference for 6B and the commission may feel comfortable in this situation because really I think all the units are pretty much the same. It, it may work better here than it might've worked over at 1906. Um, uh, so just point that out for the commission's consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, I know it's late, but we are here and we're in public hearing. So now it's time to ask our questions. So, yeah, we can go to the public first. Well, yeah, that's up to Oh, no, no, no. Okay, we'll go. Go ahead, June. Do you start, Matt? Then I'll see. It was just can. a question for Maureen. Did did we hear that the public bus is coming down this far? The public system buses. We we are expecting that there will be service. The our economic development director um, reported to you that he's expecting service to begin that'll go as far as New Park South. That would so that's just south of the intersection of Orchard. So that includes. Yes. This was north of that, yes. Okay. On the public, anyone want to comment about this? Anything new that you want to bring to the forefront? Okay. All right. Um, oh, she is. Okay. Talk about the Lindall, Lindall Strand, um, 48 Holly. I'm going to talk about the trees again. Um, after reading Mr. Graver's little report here, um, he's addressing Mr. Snow. You are going to dig foundations for a housing project close to these spruces. The dig zone would be 15 feet away from the trunks. And he's saying the trees will survive. Well, dig zone is going to be more than that because the buildings are going to be 15 feet away. So I'm not sure how much farther out you have to dig, but I'm sure it's a few feet. Um, so anyways, I went out and I took a couple more pictures today. And the first one shows... Um, I'm at that same point where, where I took the pictures last time, but the first picture shows um, the storage units mm. inside of them and Berlin Auto, and you can see the little stake with the orange on it. Oh, yeah. So those trees are a little bit in from the property line. Um, but basically, you know, they're, they're big trunks, so it's probably two feet around. So let's say maybe it's 13 feet um, that they're going to be away from you know, the buildings. Uh, the other picture, there again, the stakes in the foreground 
and um, I'm to the left, and 1676 uh, is to the right, and that's the west boundary. And I tried to take another, it's kind of the same picture as last time, but it shows the, um, the 1676 spruces, they're way in. They're at least three feet in from the stake, from the, from the line. And if you look on, Maureen, if you could put the map up, to any of them that shows the trees. So when you look at the lines, the trees are, you know, are inside the line, the boundary line. And as you go up towards north, trees are even in farther. So if they're like three feet from me, you know, over at 48, they're probably five or six feet in. So now they're even closer to what the buildings would be in the dig zone. And, you know, all the trees, all the trees are going to be destroyed. Um, and then they're talking about, you know, replacing them with small stuff. So we're gonna lose our buffer. And I'm there again, I was saying last time that I was concerned, I have some bigger trees that are five feet on, on my side of the line. So I'm concerned, you know, that I'm gonna lose my own. And I, you know, probably would be, you know, tough, you know, tough bounce, who cares? But we, we you know, we need as much of a buffer as we can get. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. And good evening. Good evening. Nice. Uh, 38 Holly Court. You know, again, um, you know, they're, they're not little houses. They're not bungalows. It's crammed houses on a little lot. Um, I was curious as if anybody considered um, bus stop and you know, we, we were talking about a bus stop you know this is not a single family residential home this is a complex we're not talking you know one child with the prospect of one child we're talking many children and has any consideration been given to the fact that there's a stoplight there at worthington ridge so this is this property is just a couple hundred feet past that southbound <clears throat> and i could see a disaster there you know back the traffic backing up through the through the light and creating a lot of problems sure. and, and potential safety issue with the, the children. Um, and then again, the parking, you know, this is a, this is a very big lot of, a lot of units. I know they're, they're saying, oh, we got our, you know, required two, uh, two spaces per unit, um, but ex having an extended family over, what are you gonna do, shuttle them in from the high school? No, what's gonna happen is they're gonna come down our street on, onto the dead end street and probably find a way to their to their complex and that's just you know it's just not again it's not something we want for our community and so um again i just think it's a bad idea not to mention the flooding and and, and the water which we've you know covered over and over again and i i still don't understand how we're here this didn't pass inlands and wetlands it, 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 it failed to pass inland, in, in inlands and wetlands so why are we even having this, this discussion at this level you know, for me, it, it's a done deal. We haven't made it past in the in, in, in wetlands. Why do we have to sit through this? Why, why do we have to you know, go through all this, you know, angst, knowing that we haven't made it past the inlands and wetlands part of it? So that's that's my uh, my, my take on everything. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Good evening or night, really. Uh, um, Sherry Rice, 38 Holly Court. Um, I would just ask the commission that um, I know you guys are tired. I'm tired and I don't know that I can have a coherent thought um, to express to you at this point, uh, other than what I've expressed before that um, this plan is just a bad one. Um, I would ask that at least the public hearing be left open so that that might be something we could revisit at the next meeting so that we can. But again, I echo the words of my husband is that Inlands and Wetlands has denied this. We're here. You know, I know that they're saying they're going to appeal, but I, this just feels like he who has the most money wins. You know, the, the residents of Inlands and Wetlands have, have spoken. 
Yeah. Berlin Land Trust has spoken. We have been here countless times. We've been reiterating and I and you know, we're at eleven o'clock and the residents just got a chance to speak as to this plan. I mean, this has been where this is monopolized by yeah. the plans and all this other stuff that I don't know, it just feels overwhelming. I'm sure it does to you guys as well it does to me. But again, I just ask that um the public hearing be left open so that we could further have discussion on this if it need be. Okay. Thank you. Oh well, Maureen, you want to address that? The public hearing are remaining open. Okay. I haven't yeah, I'll I'll reach out to them next. I just want to address that issue first. For the sake of the public and the commission as well. So at my last calculation, um, the meeting, I believe it was on the 21st of September when he, when attorney Smith consented to an extension, um, he that time consented the extension to close to October 12th being tonight. And um, I indicated that 18 of the 65 extension days remain. They again have to consent to so those are Okay. And just for the record, we would consent to an extension to your next meeting, which I think is next week. week. Yeah. So I can provide you that in writing, Maureen. Like, okay. Well, the hour is late. Is that him? Yeah, sure. All right. Let me see if there's anyone on Zoom who who has stayed with us through the evening wishes to address the commission. All right. No one on Zoom. All right. Um. Before before we go any further, I just want to I just want to kind of revisit this plan just in general so I could make sure I make my point. And um, I think for 1.9 acres of property, this is a very ambitious plan. Um, I am not opposed to affordable housing as I've approved other projects in the past, but I've also worked very hard with the applicants to make sure that the projects work well with the communities that are surrounding it and there are levels of compromise. So when I look at this plan, the first thing I think, and I know there's been testimony, um, I know there's been testimony saying that there's plenty of green space, but I still don't see a sense of community. And I would suggest that we think about possibly eliminating um, unit six, unit 13, four and two out of the center aisle. I would like to see uh, perhaps some of these, some of these two story frames in, instead of clustering them up against, you know, um, an auto body place and a storage place. Maybe we can try to move them up and perhaps make uh, duplexes. It seems like we have a couple of duplexes here but sort of pull the project in, um, give them more setbacks, a more sense of community because now you have a center focus here and the duplexes would help eliminate the 10, the 10 feet that you have, the 10 feet strip that you have between units. Now you could say, well, 10 feet sounds like a lot, but you have a two story building going up. So you're gonna have like an alleyway it would be better if you try to combine some of the units and maybe allow for 20 feet of space. Now that's more livable, it's more doable, and I think it's probably more sense of community. And I think it might actually give a, a healthier look or, or quality um, to the project. So I'm asking that you um, sincerely visit that. I have a problem, I, I, I think with the drainage issues that have um, happen and I won't address, I won't do Inley Wetland's job for them, but the pictures um, from the 500 year storm that only happens 500 years was were pretty impressive. And you have a swale that is um, owned partly by the applicant and partly by the folks at the, I guess the auto place. And it sort of puts the Otis on the person who, um, at the auto place to take care of the swale along with you, like co-owner, to make sure that the project has proper drainage. And I'm not even sure that that's the way to go. But again, that's not my 
it's not my uh, expert level of expertise with planet with um, inland wetlands. Um, it was kind of nice that you put um, the little the picnic tables out there, but I think if you do something with the center aisle and pull the project in a little, combine perhaps make a couple duplexes um, uh, with the single family, you'll have a better. I, I think it'll be an overall better project, Mr. Snow. And I think it would probably be more conducive with what uh, the surrounding neighborhood has in anticipation. Um, and I think it also fits in well with what we feel um, the Berlin Turnpike should con con continue to grow and look like. Um, we obviously have other housing projects on the Berlin Turnpike, but they have worked well with the commission to allow for these walking trails and, and such so that the residents can truly have that little sense of when they go home, they have a neighborhood and not just a house or a rent. Um, and that's basically my first level of thoughts coming right of that. Now, hopefully you'll take that into consideration. Anyone else at this point? I know the hour's late, but I, oh, Diane. Um, well, I, I agree with your suggestions in that um, I think they um, provide for more creativity uh, for the site. And um, I think my biggest concern for the site is density. And mm -hmm. so the, um, the, the suggestions that you're offering, I think are um, good and uh, could make improvements on uh, what's being proposed. Also by pulling the uh, buildings in a little bit uh, would do something to um, further protect the trees that are already existing um, along the boundaries. Um, I did request the um, consulting arborist opinion and I still think that um, the consulting arborist is the um, appropriate expert level to offer an opinion uh, with respect to um, the survivability of the trees. So um, I would like to see that. Um, the arborist just does not have the same level of expertise. Okay. So, anyone else at this point? So just with regard to that, um, the rather than have attorney hope walk back up to the microphone um attorney smith did agree as a condition of approval uh that they they would obtain an opinion from a registered consulting arborist that does have that registration from the association so that was um part of the record on the previous application um and he did realize that he may obviously you'll recall that was about what four hours ago yeah thank you okay um, anyone else really quick? No, I mean, I know the hour's late, so. Um, I guess the applicant has, cons has the, I think they've consented to possibly continuing or do we want to close? Well, I do have a letter about um, consenting to an extent. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. To, no, you know what I'm saying? Yes. E extend it or consenting to extend the public hearing. Um, until your next meeting. So I have that here and I'm happy to give that up if that's, it seems like that's the direction we're going in. Um, so I can put that into the record. Um, if the commission does decide to vote, if there's anything additional you would like us to bring to the next meeting or, um, and even if you don't, can't think right now because you're tired, if you can even email it to Maureen and if you can pass it on to us or, um, anything like that, we're happy, obviously, to address um, any comments. Well, uh, let, now that you've opened that door, there is a, um, at your at your entrance, you have a, um, um, a sort of, what do you call that? It looks like an island, so that you have people going to the to the right only to, to make their way around the boulevard or whatever. You mean the, cr the cross hatching? Yeah, I guess that's what it is. That's what you would call it. Um, it you know, I mean, if we if we get rid of the center island and those buildings, we couple up a couple of these, pull it in, 
you might be able to have a really nice boulevard effect for an entranceway, a landscape boulevard effect for your development. That would be awesome. Okay. It would be really nice. You could put a, a couple shade trees there if you wanted to, because you're still far away where you're not going to be interfering with so your sight line. But it would also, I think, add um, to the attractiveness of the entrance way. You could give people a little bit of pride, you know, hey, I'm home. But anyway, okay. Anyone else? Nothing? I did want to mention one, uh, just respond yeah. to one of the public comments, and I think it's uh, definitely a reasonable question. Um, you know, why did we proceed tonight when the wetlands application yeah. um, was denied? So I did just want to address that. So um, we are appealing that wetlands decision. It is possible that um, we do get a wetlands permit out of that appeal. And if we do, then it is critical um, that this process is completed in some, in some fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, we do proceed and um, go forward in creating the record for this public hearing. As I mentioned previously, you can consider the denial of that wetland permit in your deliberations as mm -hmm. one of the factors when you evaluate everything else. Um, so that's why we're continuing on tonight. So to just, I understand why it, it seems kind of uh, counterintuitive. But. Yeah, no, we got it. Okay. So what's the pleasure of the commission? I will make the motion to continue until next Thursday. Okay. Motion to, second. Motion to continue by Mr. Rogan. Thursday, October 19th. 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 Yes. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And we'll put this up early. Well, it's um, be the first thing. Right? Yeah, it should be the first thing because it's still in public hearing. You will have a couple of 824s on it. On the, well, on 820, the meeting, yeah, 824 is so that you folks, I, yeah, I just, I just want to the only item. Yeah. I just want to give you the heads up because you're still in a public hearing. This will be the first thing. There's just going to be a little housekeeping up front and then we're going to complete our deliberations on this. So I, I thank you all for coming out tonight and, um, and all the nights that you have come and hopefully we'll have a, Berlin Fair here. you know, just so that you know. You'll be treated kinder last go round. Okay. So so you have a motion made. We have a motion. Rogan. We have a second for the discussion. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Those opposed, so moved. Thank you. I guess I kinda I saw them leaving and I just wanted to reassure them that, you know, yeah. the public, you know, will be up front. All right. So now we're into old business. The application of the nineteen oh six Berlin LLC prepared by Christopher J. Smith, Esquire. Alter and Pearson LLC submitted pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 830 Affordable Housing Land Use Appeals. We have the proposed zone text amendment. This is a zone text amendment creating 11, uh, 11 EE planned in residential infill development, inclusionary multifamily residential use of the housing opportunity of workforce housing component. Um, and this was an item that's been closed. This is a text amendment. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion, uh, what was uh, brought before us. Um, so I'm going to, oh, so go ahead. I mean, anyone want to chime in? So my thought being right now is I see that we have to decide by November 11th, which is coming up, but seeing as the hour is late and we have a pretty light meeting next Thursday, I say that we dig into this next Thursday. So you have a motion to continue? I'll make the motion to continue. Second by Mr. Hamill. Third. Third, by further discussion, all those in favor, aye. aye. Application for the site plan of the 52 unit multifamily residential community Spruce Brook Apartments, real properties known as 1906, Berlin Turnpike, map 20, blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, and this, we closed. And do we want to deliberate or? I say we go till the next meeting, so I'll make the motion to continue. Motion I'll to second. continue by Mr. Rogan. Ms. Jorsey has a second for the discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Application of little houses. And do we just, uh, this is for the proposed text amendment on Aye. the plan residential infill. I'll keep my sentiment going. I'll make the motion to continue until next meeting. Second. I hate you, Brian. 
Um, okay, so Mr. Hamill has a second. No, Mr. Dykin has a second on that one. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed to move the application of the site plan for the permit of the 20 units. That's also continued. Mm -hmm. Do we need to mo go ahead and make the motion, Rogan? No, no it's been continued. No, it's no, it's All right, it's still open. I'm going to put still open because I'm going to get so confused. All right, uh, planner comments? None. <laughs> is this ever going to get easier? Please, dear God, this has got to get easier. I mean, just, just the agendas alone. I, I had something. I didn't bring it up with me. So. Okay. All right. And uh, oh, actually, I do remember what it was. It has to do, I'm sorry. It does have to, and it will be. I, I will have it on the agenda for next week, um, if at all possible. Um, it's regarding the zoning um, consultant that we have had for the POCD, continuing the zoning work and um, discussion of funding for it. Okay. Did they do their implement thing? Did the town council? Pick Not yet. It? That's October 24th. Scheduled for their meeting on October 24th. Okay, all righty. So most of the boards, I believe, have nominated someone, but we're getting that list together. Okay. I did count, count. I so, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Mr. Dykin. For a uh, second. Second. second by Ms. Dorsey. For the I get discussion. to vote a lot. That's all. I know. Jeez. For the discussion, all those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, so moved. All right, and all right. my hour's 11.20. Have a good night, good night. everybody. Yeah, good night, Steve. Yeah. But when are you going to come back, Steve? Um, done working nights this, this week, so next week. Oh, next week, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we hope to have you back in person. You take care. Good night. Good night. Thank you.